not really. I noticed. Yes. Go. Um, do you think the term anchor baby is offensive? No. There's another term that I come up with. Uh, I'm happy to hear it. What's, uh, what we got to focus on is how do we secure the border so that uh, so that people that come in legally don't come, that people coming legally do come. This is a pretty simple thing. It shouldn't be this complex. Uh, it's a political wedge issue the left uses to win elections, and we ought to be the party that solves this problem so that we can get back to the business of creating high sustained economic growth. You have some issues of race and immigration in your own family. Can you talk about your own personal experience with that and dealing with the fact that if your kids didn't look like all of the other kids in your family? Yeah, look, if we were a diverse country, we have, that's, the, that's, that's a virtue, that's a strength of our country. And uh, I'm proud of the fact that my children uh, have a Mexican-American mom. As American as anybody else, loves this country as much or any as much as anybody else, uh, believes in the shared values of this great country, and my children are blessed to have that heritage. What led you to so, become an American citizen? She wanted to vote for my dad. She <laughs> loves this country. She wanted to share the experience with me, and this is what families do all the time. It's. Uh, it shouldn't be such a novel thing, to be honest with you. This is this is pretty regular uh, in the places where I grew up and where I live now. And this whole immigration debate is hurtful for a lot of people. Really hurtful. Not, I'm not talking about my family here. I'm talking about, in general, when you just, you know, huge, just kind of a tidal wave of accusations or bombastic talk. There are a lot of people that share the immigrant experience, and when they hear this, what they hear is, you don't think I'm part of this. You don't think I'm part of this country. I know that. I know that. I know that for a fact because I have hundreds of people that tell me that. And so I think we have to tone down the rhetoric a little bit, talk about solutions, and uh, get on with fixing things in this country, and turn this into a, a driver for success for our country rather than this defeatist attitude that we now have. But there are Governor, Governor, do you regret using the term anchor babies yesterday on the radio? No, I didn't. Hey, is that what you're I don't. I don't regret it. You don't it. regret it? No. Do you have a better term? I'm not. I'm, I'm asking you. Okay. A lot you of give, you give me. You, you give me a better term, and I'll use it. I'll, I'll be serious. Governor, Governor, don't yell at me behind my ear, though. I'm sorry about that. Governor, 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 language anchor baby. Is that not bombastic? No, language? it isn't. Give me another language. Give me another word. The term is undocumented immigrants in the U.S. That's like a seven. That's not another word. That's a seven. They are no Look, question. Here's the deal. What I said was it's commonly referred to that. That's what I said. I didn't use it as, as my own language. What we ought to do is protect the 14th. You want to get to the policy for a second? I think that people born in this country ought to be American citizens. Okay, now we got that over with. Um, Notice that your brother sent out an email today on yeah. your behalf. He's for me. For the, no surprise. <laughs> you, you run around the country reminding all of us that you're your own man. I am. Um, but now you're having him work for you, the, the, the yeah. family get together. And is, that a, is, that a, is that a contradiction? No. I've got my own record. I've got my own life experience. I've got, I'm blessed to have uh, a, a, a brother that loves me and wants to help me. Over and out. Governor, 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 you guys are really like Trump here, also in Iowa, nationally and in your own state in Florida. He said last night your crowd was sleeping. How do you respond to that? I mean, That's it's actually a narrative that your your campaign lacks enthusiasm. You're, you you're repeating uh, the echo of the narrative. You know? So, look, if you went to the event, you would have found that there was uh, a lot of enthusiasm. And there's a big difference between Donald Trump and me. I'm a proven conservative with the record. He isn't. I cut taxes every year. He's proposed the largest tax increase in mankind's history, not just our own country's history. I have been consistently pro-life. He, until recently, was for partial birth abortion. I don't, I've never met a person that actually thought that that was a, a good idea. I believe we need to reform our health care system to make sure that we stop the suppression of wages and allow people to have access to insurance. He's for a single-payer system. He actually advocates these things. He's been a Democrat longer than being a Republican. I have fought for Republican and conservative causes all of my adult life. And I just think when people get this narrative, whatever the new term is, com the compare and contrast narrative, then they're going to find that that I'm going to be the guy that they're going to vote for. And it's a long haul, man. Come on, last one, last one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you explain yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Did you hear about the South Boston man who allegedly be a homeless man and said he was acting for inspired by Hope? That's, that's horrible if it's the case. It would be horrible. But I think, look, 
there should be a little more focus on solving the problems and talking about ideas that matter uh, rather than just kind of coming in like a tidal wave and saying things that are just outrageous and don't make sense. And the immigration policies that he has brought, has brought up, Mark, they're not conservative either. It's going to cost hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. 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 Last one, guys. It'll disrupt families. The idea that you have another country pay for the infrastructure for your own country is not going to happen. The idea that you're going to stop having people remit back to other countries is not going to happen. All of this stuff is to appeal to people's anger and their angst rather than have solutions to solve problems. Governor. At the end of the day, the candidate that offers the most compelling solutions to the problems that we face and has the leadership skills, the proven leadership skills to do it, is going to be the one that wins. So let's go talk about this two months from now, three months from now, and I hope you all are still around. And I think what you'll find is that you'll for, you'll have forgotten what what exists, you know, in August, whatever it is, 20th. Why because Governor, 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 I'm Hillary Governor. Clinton by 12 in Florida, and he's losing in Florida. When Governor. people start realizing we need to win, I think it'll look a lot better. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, the Republican Party recently had a debate with 10 candidates. Do you think that the general election debate should have more than two? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next Governor, time. you talk about gender and vice presidential okay. selection. Are you thinking about nominating a woman? Governor, any thoughts on whistleblowers Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning? Governor, any thoughts on whistleblowers? Would you pardon Edward Snowden?